Everybody owes a debt of gratitude to these doctors and nurses who have been on the front line for months now. The warriors at the tip of the spear. Governor Greg Abbott taking the time to thank health care workers as he addressed the continued rollout of the coronavirus vaccine and whether or not we'll see a shutdown in Texas. Plus, an argument between a man and a woman ends with a fire breaking out. We have the latest this noon. And it could be a little bit damp to start your Saturday, but the rest of the weekend looks pretty good. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. A medical miracle. That's how Governor Greg Abbott is describing Operation Warp Speed as a rollout of the coronavirus vaccine continues in Texas. Yeah, the governor says more than 120,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine will be delivered today. That means more than 220,000 doses will have been delivered by the end of the week. During an update in Austin this morning, Abbott also said that around a million people will receive the vaccine this month here in the state of Texas. And right now the vaccine is being delivered to specific health care facilities, but the governor expects more facilities to receive the vaccine as more dosages arrive in Texas. Meanwhile, the Texas Department of State Health Services Commissioner John Hellerstedt is encouraging people to trust the science behind the vaccine, but of course to continue following safe practices amid the pandemic. These vaccines are proven safe and effective. I think that is something people should never forget. Nothing about the, uh, the uh, ability to look at the safety and effectiveness of this vaccine was shortcut, but we're not done yet. This is a marathon. Uh, we're at that point in the marathon, I think, where uh, we're all about to just hit that wall, as they say. Uh, and we need an extra boost of confidence and optimism that will get us across the finish line. And that is the vaccine, in my opinion. In addition to vaccines, the governor reminded people that antibody therapeutic drugs are available. Abbott encouraged healthcare facilities to make use of this treatment. And this morning, the governor was once again asked if his team is considering another shutdown given the rise in cases. His answer, a definitive no. Business. Every adult in Texas has the responsibility to follow the safe practices as we continue to work our way out of this. If they do that, we can contain COVID-19 while we continue the process of vaccinating our fellow Texans and continue to open up. People's lives have been crushed and their, their pocketbooks and their ability to pay the rent and put food on the table uh, has been harmed because of the uh, uh, shutdowns. And so, no. We will not have any more shutdowns in Texas. Businesses both big and small have taken a hit during the pandemic and so have workers. The number of Americans applying for unemployment benefits rose again last week to 885,000. Here in San Antonio, Baptist Health System will start giving COVID-19 vaccines to frontline staff this afternoon. Now, staff participated in a vaccination drill this week. Those coordinating the vaccinations and administering them toured the areas where the vaccinations will take place. Baptist Health System is expected to receive a total of 3,900 doses of the vaccine this week. And across the country, we are seeing a record number of hospitalizations and deaths. But there's hope as an FDA advisory panel meets to discuss Moderna's vaccine candidate. As ABC Rena's Roy reports, that vaccine is on track to be authorized for emergency use. Reinforcements could be right around the corner for Americans. Welcome everyone for today's virtual meeting. And it's up to the medical experts in this Zoom meeting to help decide that. The FDA advisory panel meeting today to vote on whether to recommend Moderna's vaccine for emergency use authorization. A key part of FDA's mission is to evaluate new therapies and determine which are safe and effective for their intended uses. From there, the FDA commissioner will have to give the official green light. If that happens, six million doses of the vaccine will be distributed next week. Pfizer's vaccine has been crisscrossing the country this week with thousands of healthcare workers and some seniors already getting the shot. From an efficacy safety point of view, they're, they're nearly identical. Uh, one's a little bit easier to distribute, doesn't have to be kept frozen, that's the Moderna one. I doubt most people will have a choice and it shouldn't really matter. They're about the same once it gets into your arm. Wednesday was the country's deadliest day since the pandemic began, with more than 3,600 people succumbing to the virus, according to Johns Hopkins University. It's like being at war. Um, it's, uh, I've never seen so many code blues um, all at, in, in one shift. 
California reporting more than 53,000 new cases Wednesday alone. The ICU at Providence St. Mary's Hospital in Apple Valley at 300 percent capacity with a surge of patients pouring in. And the major progress we are seeing on the vaccine front is here not a moment too soon. The CDC out with new preliminary research that shows COVID-19 is now likely the leading cause of death here in the United States, beating out heart disease and cancer, which have been the number one killers for for decades. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Here in Bear County, the seven day average continues to fluctuate. It is once again above the 1000 mark. There is also another increase in our hospitals. 826 COVID-19 patients are hospitalized. 267 are in the intensive care unit and 130 are on ventilators ventilators. During yesterday's briefing, Metro Health also reported five more people died after contracting the virus. There's no doubt many are excited about a COVID-19 vaccine, but medical experts worry that some people may not want to be vaccinated because it was approved so quickly. A doctor who oversaw the local clinical trials for phase three of the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines says trust the process. Here's Myra Arthur with a preview of this week's episode of KSAT Explains. Dr. Douglas Denham oversaw phase three of the Moderna and Pfizer clinical trials in San Antonio. In terms of safety, there's no, no concern whatsoever. I, 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 can, I can honestly say I would take the vaccine the day it's available in my family, too. Retired San Antonio doctor Frank Hample was in the Moderna study. I was one of the first five patients to be put in the study. Four years is the quickest a vaccine has ever been developed until now. So some might be worried about the rapid development of the COVID-19 vaccine. The actual trial has been going on at, at the pace that a normal vaccine trial would. Denham says the only change is every resource, every scientist around the world was working toward this historic discovery. A lot of money uh, from different governments around the world were, were, were you know, used to, to, to help speed the process and research uh, and development. Although Hampel doesn't know whether he got the real thing or the placebo, he says he's confident the risk factor of getting vaccinated is much lower than getting the virus itself. Especially compared to the number of deaths and the illnesses that you get from the COVID disease itself. Myra Arthur, KSAT 12 News. KSAT explains the COVID-19 vaccines is now available to stream at ksat.com slash explains. It is also available on the KSAT TV app that can be downloaded on your Roku, Fire Stick, and most other smart TV devices. New details this noon in a grisly murder case. Bear County Sheriff's Office investigators were able to identify a suspect thanks to a witness who says they helped the suspect unknowingly. Now back on November 19th, the public works crew was picking up trash when they came across 31 year old Nicole Perry's body wrapped in a black trash bag. Later that week, a witness came forward and told investigators that 33 year old Robert Martinez called the witness to ask for help disposing of a large package. An arrest report states that witness then went to a home on West Harlan Avenue where the suspect and four other people loaded something into the back of the witness's SUV. The witness says they disposed of it not knowing it was a body. That person became suspicious after seeing severed human hands at the home where they met the suspect. Deputies say they found blood and a possible murder weapon at that home. Castillo now faces a murder charge. Heated words appear to be what sparked a fire overnight at a home on the west side. San Antonio fire investigators are looking for the man who they believe set fire to the home in the 600 block of South San Joaquin. As Katrina Weber reports, it also caused the death of a pet. Firefighters take a deliberate approach to putting out a fire, which they believe someone intentionally set. They say a couple who lived in this home in the 600 block of South San Joaquin had some heated words, an argument which boiled over. At some point after that, they say the man purposely started the fire. When firefighters arrived shortly after midnight, it was still going, but the man was gone. They say the woman got out safely, but one of their dogs died. Firefighters say it looks like the fire was set at the back of the house. And if you look, that's where most of the damage appears to be. Although it does seem that smoke spread throughout the house. Part of the siding appeared to almost melt away, indicating the heat had to be intense. Arson investigators have not said yet what was used to start the fire, only that they strongly suspect this was no accident. 
and the man is found, he could face a charge of arson. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And children in our community will be receiving presents thanks to generous donors. How you can still take part in the effort. This essay salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by Texas Med Clinic. This is Jim Bug from the Texas Med Clinic, and I want to wish you all a very happy and healthy Christmas. And some local kids are getting a little Christmas cheer and some free presents. Yeah, hundreds of gifts were collected for the children of the Alamo Community Group this morning. Those gifts collected by Wood Forest National Bank, and they'll be delivered over the next few days. And if you want to donate gifts, it's not too late. If they want to donate, they can call us to, uh, directly at 210-731-8030 and just say, hey, I missed the deadline with Wood Forest National Bank, but I'd love to give a donation. And then we'll set it up for them to deliver at one of our properties. Alamo Community Group says the kids are always very grateful for the presence and even write thank you notes to the donors. And taking a look outside with live cam this afternoon, 54 degrees. It's actually pretty nice outside, but maybe that's because I'm comparing it to 31 degrees that we had this morning. I'm yeah, still was, cold. It was, <laughs> I, I am too, actually. Uh, it, it was a cold start for sure. We started off at 31. As Steph mentioned, a lot of places below freezing this morning, but we're seeing a pretty rapid warm up. It'll turn into a nice afternoon. The aquifer is uh, up two tenths of a foot, 661.6 in your pollen count. Actually looks pretty good. It's just mold. It's in the low category at 120. We've got some more clouds in the way tomorrow. Maybe a slight chance for rain and a pretty nice weekend. We'll look ahead coming up. We were talking about our pets earlier and yeah. how earlier in the morning they were like there's no way we're going outside <laughs> it's too yeah, cold yeah they turn right back around and come right back in the warmth mm. i don't blame them i don't blame them good go where the warmth is because hey, it was chilly this morning guys we had uh freezing temperatures almost everywhere uh, across bear county 31 degrees at the airport this morning it was 28 randolph 29 port sa 28 even down there at stinson places like bernie stage and kerrville down into the low 20s this morning it was a hard freeze here in Hill Country and a lot of places, as I mentioned, down below that 32 degree mark. 28 in Gonzales got down to 33 in Del Rio. They did stay just a little bit above freezing there. It will be warmer tomorrow morning. We're going to have more moisture in place. And while we will see some chilly temperatures still, they won't be as cold as this. Right now, we're up to 54, so we've already gained quite a bit here. Uh, it is uh, quite a bit warmer. 57 Pleasanton, 55 Hondo, 54 right now in Rock Springs, 58 in Del Rio. Sunny skies, it's turning into a really gorgeous day. Take a look at the time lapse. It's a great sunrise. Uh, no clouds in the sky at all. And as I mentioned, right now we're at 54. We've got a bit of a southerly breeze now, so that's a change around five miles per hour. That's going to start the process, very slow process, of bringing some moisture back. Dew point is at 30, so that's still relatively low and dry but the dew point will start to climb not so much today or even tonight but as we get into tomorrow morning you'll start to maybe notice it a bit and by friday tomorrow we've got those dew points jumping up into the 50s that's going to usher in some cloud cover so tomorrow is going to be quite a bit more gray i think clouds will be on the increase and by the afternoon we're probably looking at overcast skies not seeing much at all today uh, it is pretty interesting though you can still see the snow on the ground up there across parts of oklahoma and the extreme north texas from that last snowstorm and uh, th that has pushed well to the east we've got our next storm system which is gathering strength across the rockies but the, the, this last snowstorm that uh, moved through the country still dumping some snow on parts of new england at this hour and it's still pretty heavy places like boston still seeing some snow and then across the state of maine still seeing some heavy snow the the totals were pretty impressive these are just some estimates here but close to a foot across parts of New York, and then you get into some big numbers as you get into central parts of Pennsylvania and the higher elevations there of, of New York. So this was a record snowstorm in some cases, and it'll be digging out for a couple days here with that much snow. For us, uh, again, clear skies today, but as we get into tomorrow, here comes the clouds, so then they'll fill in through the day. So this is around five o'clock. And then by Saturday morning, there is enough moisture there where we should start to get some drizzle, maybe a couple light showers. 
It's not going to amount to a whole lot, but it could be a little bit damp to start your Saturday and certainly some showers uh, east of San Antonio. By midday, a lot of that rain is moving away. We're starting to see the clearing and by Saturday afternoon and evening, we're clearing out and it turns into a pretty nice weekend. Temperatures will still be pretty nice. OK, we've got to look ahead to Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We've got a lot of questions about this. This is pretty far out there, so we're just kind of just looking at this from far away, but uh, we're talking about maybe some chilly temperatures uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. It looks like we're going to get front through here on Wednesday and then there could be some more snow for the Northeast. So generally speaking, we're talking about some cool temperatures. It looks like for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Just a heads up temperatures today into the 60s for highs mid 60s and then dropping down into the 40s and eventually uh, upper 30s tonight. 63 tomorrow, cloudy drizzle, some sprinkles Friday night, Saturday morning, then some clearing will be up around 70 through Tuesday. We'll have to watch that front on Wednesday and see kind of the impact it has on our forecast for the holidays, guys. We will watch out for it, but for the weekend, at least it looks pretty mild. It does. Thanks, All right. Justin. Yeah. All right, Larry, so we have a preseason matchup tonight. Spurs heading across the state to face the Rockets. Spurs will close out their preseason schedule tonight at the Houston Rockets, so we can expect to see more three-pointers as they get ready for their regular season opener next Wednesday at Memphis. And Giants offensive coordinator Jason Garrett is out this Sunday. Coming up. The Spurs will close out their three-game preseason schedule at the Houston Rockets. The Spurs fell to the Rockets Tuesday night, 112-98, dropping to 0-2 this preseason. And in the process, the Silver and Black are shooting a lot of threes. That's just today's NBA. Tuesday night, they fired up 31 threes, making 10. And in their preseason opener versus the Thunder, they went 15 of 38 from downtown. 30-plus threes in back-to-back -back preseason games. It has been an emphasis, but at the same time, uh, Pop just wants us to take the easy shot. If there's an open shot, take it. And nine times out of ten, he's going to want us to shoot the three. So that's something that all of us have improved on. I mean, even L.A., you know, he's knocking down even more threes and more threes as, as, as the games continue. So, um, absolutely. So here is your matchup. 0-2 Spurs at the 2-1 Rockets tonight, 7 p.m. at the Toyota Center. Men's college basketball, number 11, Texas, hosting Sam Houston State last night. First half, the ball goes inside to Jericho Sims, and he turns and dunks over his defender just like Justin would do. Sims scored seven points. Texas up 44-26 at halftime. You know it, Justin. Second half, Matt Coleman steals the pass for Texas. Misses the layup, but Greg Brown is there for the follow jam. The Horns are up by 25. Brown had 17. Later on, Horns on the break, and Courtney Ramey will lob the ball to Kai Jones, and he goes slam dunk. Texas rolls 79-63, and Texas is feeling good. I just found out that we can win any game. We uh, beat ourselves. We, uh, we found out in the Villanova game that we can beat ourselves also. So that's something that we have to grow from. But uh, we're a very mature team. We are a deep team, so anybody, we can play 13 people at a time. But uh, it's going to be fun to see uh, how much we keep growing. And then it's going to be a good test Sunday against Oklahoma State. Texas is now 6-1 and one this season and will start Big 12 play Sunday at 1 p.m. in Austin with Oklahoma State. So TCU at Oklahoma State last night. And this one went down to the final shot, as it so often does. Less than a minute to play, Oklahoma State up one. The Cowboys miss inside, so TCU in transition. They pass it around while looking for their best shot. And then R.J. Nimhard gets it at the top of the key. He pulls up from the elbow for the go-ahead bucket. TCU is up one with 7.6 seconds remaining. Oklahoma State inbounding now. Cade Cunningham gets the ball. He brings it up. He gets double teamed in the corner. He puts up a tough shot. It's short, and TCU comes back to win a close one, 77-76. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. New York Giants offensive coordinator and former Dallas Cowboys head coach Jason Garrett has tested positive for COVID-19. Garrett will continue to work remotely. The Giants will not practice today for Sunday night's game against Cleveland. Tight ends coach Freddie Kitchens will call the offensive plays against the Browns, who fired him as their head coach last season. Mm. Okay. Well, as for tonight, go Spurs go. Go Spurs go, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. You got it. A popular podcast now going to your TV. We have a preview of Song Exploder and where you'll be able to watch it.
Plus, more than 20 million people are still under some kind of winter weather alert in the Northeast. We have the latest on the first major winter storm this year coming up. Congressional leaders are close to getting into an agreement of a COVID-19 economic aid package. An agreement seemed near on legislation that would extend help to individuals and businesses and ship coronavirus vaccines. Negotiators are working on a $900 billion package that would revive subsidies for businesses, help distribute new vaccines, fund schools, and renew soon to expire jobless benefits. They're also looking to include new direct payments of about $600 to most Americans. Unemployment benefits run out December 26 for more than 10 million people. It's being called a major milestone in testing for COVID-19. The FDA has now authorized the first over-the-counter fully at home test to determine whether a person is infected. Courtney Friedman has more on how it works. It's the first in the fight against the coronavirus. The Illum COVID-19 home test is now backed by the FDA for anyone two years of age or older. It's the first COVID test that can be used completely at home without a prescription. The test uses a nasal swab, but doesn't go as far back as a swab you'd get from a trained healthcare provider. It has an analyzer that connects with an app on a smartphone to help users conduct the test and decipher the results, which come back on the smartphone. The FDA says the test correctly identified 96% of positive samples and 100% of negative samples in those with symptoms. In a statement, FDA Commissioner Dr. Stephen Hahn says by authorizing a test for over-the-counter use, the FDA allows it to be sold in places like drugstores where a patient can buy it, swab their nose, run the test, and find out the results in as little as 20 minutes. By expanding access to testing, officials hope to lower the burden on labs and supplies and give more options to Americans. The FDA says just like any other antigen tests, a small percentage of positive and negative results from this test may be false. So the agency advises those who test negative but have COVID-like symptoms to follow up with their health care provider. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. And as you heard Courtney mention, just like any other antigen test, there are small percentages of positive and negative results that may be false. So just follow up if you do have COVID-like symptoms. The presidential palace in France says French President Emmanuel Macron has tested positive for COVID-19. In a statement, the palace says the president took a test as soon as he started getting symptoms. The statement did not say what symptoms he was experiencing. He will now be in self-isolation for a week. Macron attended a European Union summit with other European leaders last week and on Wednesday met with Portugal's prime minister. Portugal's prime minister will also self-isolate. President Macron's trip to Lebanon, scheduled for next week, has been canceled. Fiji is now under a nationwide curfew as the nation prepares for a major cyclone. The overnight curfew was implemented Thursday after urging people near the coast to move to higher ground. Authorities also declared a state of natural disaster. The National Disaster Management Office warned the cyclone could bring waves as high as 16 meters. Fiji has a population of about 930,000 people. The East Coast first major winter storm of the year moves up the East Coast, heading for New England. ABC's Rob Marciano has the latest from Hartford, Connecticut. Snow is still coming down in Hartford, Connecticut, blowing sideways with about a foot of it on the ground here. It is pretty to walk around uh, the capital city here, a wash in this winter wonderland. But on the roadways, it's a whole nother ball game. So dangerous. We've had several multi-car pileups in several states with fatalities, including Pennsylvania, which had a 60-car pileup on I-80, shutting that down, that interstate down. Uh, this shot, also in Pennsylvania, you pull over to the side of the road to help somebody out in this dash cam video showing just how dangerous that can be as well. In Westchester County, Highway 22, a big wreck there. And in the capital city of New York, Albany, seeing about 15 inches of snow. That's where the hardest hit area is from Albany to Binghamton. 40 inches of snow coming down in central New York and along the Pennsylvania border. An incredible snowstorm that really has involved all the big northeast cities. Some areas getting more snow in just 12 hours than they saw all last season. And here we are just starting this season. Rob Marciano, ABC News, Hartford, Connecticut. 
And those are reasons why I love living in South Texas. <laughs> <laughs> All of those images you just saw right Ooh. there. Oof. Jeez whiz. A lot going on. He, he, you know, he, he just mentioned some of the totals. I was just looking here. Newark Valley, New York, 44 inches of snow. Jeez. That is incredible from one snowstorm. Uh, that'll be around for a while. Uh, here it is certainly uh, warmer. Uh, we've got 54 in San Antonio right now. 54 up there in Wichita Falls, 46 Amarillo. It's cool, but not cold. And as you look out across the rest of the country, there are some chilly numbers, especially where it is snowing. It is eight degrees right now in Caribou, Maine. No thanks. That is chilly. 39 Memphis, 35 St. Louis, a lot of places in the 20s and 30s, uh, except for Florida, where Miami right now is sitting at a balmy 84 degrees there in Miami. Uh, very comfortable there, if not warm. Uh, forecast for us, we'll be up around 64 today, sunny skies, southerly winds around 5 to 10 miles per hour, pretty nice day. Temperatures will fall off quickly tonight, but not like last night. We're expecting temperatures to only fall into the upper 30s by tomorrow morning. We'll look ahead to the weekend. Saturday starts off a little damp. We'll see some showers, some drizzle, but we should see a clearing by the afternoon. Temperatures will jump into the upper 60s by then. And then uh, upper 60s on Sunday with sunny skies looking pretty good for the weekend forecast, guys. Thank you, Justin. A popular music podcast has been remixed for a new Netflix series. We're going to have a preview still ahead. News of a vaccine not only giving people hope, but also businesses. How the FDA's approval of the Pfizer vaccine is affecting the hotel industry after the break. your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Lyft unveiling a robo-taxi service that's set to launch by 2023. The ride-hailing giant rolling out this new service in partnership with Motional. That's a joint venture between Hyundai and auto supplier Aptiv. The venture seeks to commercialize autonomous vehicles. Meanwhile, some much-needed recovery may be on the way for the travel industry. On December the 11th, the same day that the FDA approved the Pfizer vaccine, hotel booking saw a massive spike. This as people started to gain optimism that life may soon return to normal. A new report found that last Friday saw the largest number of daily bookings since the pandemic emerged back in March at just over 9,000 reservations. And with less than 10 days now until Christmas, Amazon laying out their shipping guidelines for customers looking to get last minute holiday gifts. The online retailer giving prime shoppers a deadline of December the 23rd to order their items that are available for one day shipping and until Christmas Eve to get those products that can be shipped on the same day. The announcement comes as online shopping surges amid the pandemic. And the to Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. A popular podcast is taking on a new form. It's now a show on Netflix. And a second season is about to hit the platform. CNN's Rick Damagella shows us what to expect from the latest installment. Okay, we're rolling. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we're ready to go. A popular podcast comes to life in visual form in the debut season of Song Exploder. Musician and podcast like creator Rishi K. Hirway teamed with Oscar-winning producer-director Morgan Neville to bring the show to Netflix. In each episode, an artist breaks down how they made a song of theirs. I interview them uh, using the original tracks from the recording of the song. And as they talk about how the song came together, talking about sort of the inspiration and the individual pieces, you hear all those parts in isolation. Wait for it. Let me show you what I mean. Let me show you what's in my head. So season one is actually broken up into two volumes. The first volume, it features Alicia Keys, Lin-Manuel Miranda, R.E.M. and Ty Dolla Sign. Volume two includes in-depth conversations with the killers, Dua Lipa and Nine Inch Nails' Trent Reznor. What do you hear in your voice? That's me not knowing who I was anymore. I felt alone. When I finished it, I think I said I'm sorry. Who is Hearway's dream artist for either the podcast or series? I would say if Radiohead wanted to do an episode, the door is open. Anytime. Listening in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Taking a look outside with live cam, a nice cool 54 degrees, but the sun's out now. 
Sun is out. Temperatures are on their way up. Yesterday we got up to 63. I would imagine we'll be right there again this afternoon. 54 so far. 31 was the low this morning, so that is below average. We'll be right on average for the high temperature, I think. And the records are 82 and 19. It got down to 19 back in 1972, so it could get much colder. We've got some changes coming up and maybe some cooler weather for Christmas Eve. We'll talk about it coming up. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. You know, with my busy schedule, I really need a good night's sleep, and these bamboo sheets will definitely help with that. Take a look at how soft these are. The Comfort Luxury Sheet Set, it's 1,800 thread count. Feels like 100 bucks. Breathable, no matter what the Texas season is. The microfiber and bamboo help with that. They have a deep pocket for extra thick mattresses, and it helps to reduce allergens. They come in seven great colors including white gray aqua and silver you can grab a set for every bedroom in the house retail price is a hundred and nine dollars but the case at deals price is thirty two ninety nine that's a seventy percent discount now you can get this deal and many more at case at deals.com so Christmas is almost here it yeah. might actually feel like Christmas well in San Antonio right this year. it feels like Christmas right now like it minus the white Christmas we don't have any snow but it just it's cold <laughs> and that's you know and we get we get that question a lot will we have a white Christmas probably not doesn't look that way but it does look like it may get a little bit colder we're still a ways out we got to refine the forecast a little bit more before we get there but generally speaking does look like it will be be a little bit cooler for Christmas even Christmas Day so something to watch out for it looked cold this morning uh, this picture was on our KSAC Connect as the sun came up and temperatures right at about this point when this picture was taken. I'm guessing we're in the low 30s here in San Antonio, so it was a very chilly start. We've warmed up since. We've got to talk about the drought monitor. It was released today and look at the drought conditions that we have across West Texas, New Mexico, Arizona. It's not a good situation and a lot of the state of Texas now in drought, but that includes us here in South Texas. This area in red here represents an extreme drought and it includes places like Seguin, Canyon Lake, Kerrville, Bandera, uh, even northern parts of Bear County and San Antonio and then stretching down to the areas that have seen drought almost all year long. Again, we wish we could tell you that there was rain in the forecast, but there is not much. We have a little bit Friday night, Saturday morning, but it's certainly not going to be enough to have any sort of impact on our drought situation. We're going to finish the year well below average when it comes to rainfall. Medina Lake's 43% full. It's down 31 feet and down about uh, three tenths of a foot since last week. Here's a look at our rain chances that we have, and it's just basically Friday night, Saturday morning, and it's not going to amount to much. We're looking at more very light rain, maybe some drizzle. There could be a couple showers out there. Uh, not a cloud in the sky right now. 54 degrees. Really nice today. We'll see southerly winds around 5 miles per hour. We're seeing that right now. 55 Bernie Stage, 59 Bandera. Up to 60 now in comfort after you were in the 20s this morning. Low 20s. 57 New Braunfels, 54 right now at Stinson. And we're up close to 60 there in Del Rio and Catua. And uh, some 60s from Kennedy down to Corpus. Uh, and dew points are low, and that's one of the reasons you get the big swings in temperature. But these dew points will start to come up some. And so by midday tomorrow, they're already on the rise. And with this surge of moisture, you're going to see a surge of cloud cover too. And that will fill in across the area. And by Saturday morning, there is some humidity there, but it quickly goes away as the frontal boundary comes through. And we dry out once again Saturday afternoon into Sunday. And these quick moving systems were just not. To, getting the opportunity here to get any sort of significant rain back in the forecast. Here's the setup. Uh, we're in between systems right now. So the last one is uh, moving out the East Coast, still producing some snow up there. We talked about those big time snowfall totals for Northeast and New England. And then here is our next storm system. That energy will be pulling into the middle part of the country starting tomorrow. Our forecast looks like this. Uh, clear skies today and tonight, but by tomorrow clouds fill in. And I think Friday for the most part, is going to be sort of a gray day, a lot of cloud cover. Uh, the rain, if we see any, will probably be overnight Friday into Saturday morning. It'll be light, some showers here and there, maybe some drizzle, and then that starts to push east by midday on Saturday. Still could see some rain across our far eastern counties, but by the afternoon, most everybody here is clearing out. And temperatures will still be 
fairly nice on Saturday, but warm, even though we have this frontal boundary coming through, it's not really going to cool us down a whole lot. So 63 by 3 o'clock, we'll probably top out somewhere around 63, 64, and then temperatures tumble into the 50s and 40s tonight. 63 tomorrow, 69 on Saturday, 68 Sunday. Winter officially begins Monday, but you wouldn't know it. We'll be in the 70s. And there's that front on Wednesday, and there's still some questions there with the timing and whatnot, but it looks like that frontal boundary will pack a punch and cool us down some as we get into the, the holiday, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, guys. All right, so no snow, but probably cooler temperatures. It's the way it's looking. Yay. Sounds good. Thanks, Justin. Yep. <laughs> All right, Larry, so the Cowboys headed to San Francisco mm -hmm. on Sunday. But Zeke isn't going to be 100%, we think. He has not been 100%, probably outside of week one, I'm going to say. I feel like Ezekiel Elliott's been dealing with injuries all season long. He's dealing with a calf contusion now. So how is that ahead of the 49ers matchup? And we'll have more from early National Signing Day yesterday as these young men take the next step. Coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys face the San Francisco 49ers this Sunday at noon, knowing one more loss and they're officially eliminated from the playoffs. And it appears that star running back Ezekiel Elliott will not be 100% again, dealing with the calf contusion that had him listed as questionable before the Cowboys' 30-7 win versus the Bengals. Head coach Mike McCarthy has said that he doesn't believe Zeke's injury has gotten worse. But what does Elliott think? I think it might be something I might have to manage uh, for the rest of the season. But, uh, I mean, you know, I don't know. It's just, every day is a little bit different. Um, it's just a little bit stiff and sore. And, uh, and I just got to every day just trying to work through it, uh, get work through the stiffness, uh, get all the inflammation out. So, I mean, uh, who knows how long I'll be dealing with it. At 4-9, and nine, the Houston Texans have already been eliminated from the postseason before their rematch with the Colts this weekend in Indianapolis. So we wanted to know why stars such as Deshaun Watson would want to play in the final three games of the regular season. A lot of the fans and people are looking for, you know, future and, and things like that. But right now I live in kind of in the presence. I want to finish the season out strong. Um, I want to continue to get the reps um, that I want to get to be able to continue to grow as a quarterback and as a, as a player and as a teammate. And I just want to, like I said, I just want to continue to finish the season out strong. Every week during big game coverage, we feature some of the top high school football players in the state and country. And yesterday, some of those guys signed their national letter of intent to play football at the next level. Stevens Joshua Gonzalez is going to Incarnate Word. Steel quarterback Wyatt Beagle is headed to Arkansas State. His teammate Caleb Lewis is staying here to play for UTSA. Southside linebacker Micah Young is going to Wyoming. And cornerstone Christian quarterback Lucas Coley will head to SEC country to play for Arkansas. Uh, it's a great program. Uh, I've been to three of the practices. They're always inviting me, and I always wake up early. You know, I just show up at 7:30 for the practices. Me and my uncle, we always talk about how how good UTSA would be if we just kept all the local talent. That's what Coach Taylor's trying to do, so I want to be a part of that. Uh, I'll be a DN and uh, slash linebacker. So. Okay. How does that How does that position work to what you do? What, what to your strengths? Uh, I mean, I'm very quick and get to get to the ball fast. So. I'll play any position they put me at. Yes, sir, it sure is. I've been waiting for this day for a long time, since uh, last January, uh, whenever I first committed. Uh, when I made that decision, I was fully committed. I can't wait to get up there. Playing for the Warriors has helped me tremendously. Having a coach like Coach Bachman, an OC like Coach Stansel, you know, backed by you know amazing assistant coaches, they've developed us and taught us not only how to be a great football player, but also a great man, so I'm blessed. Lucas graduated from Cornerstone yesterday and will join Arkansas early. And this is Wyatt's last week of high school, and he will come back to graduate with the Steel classmates. He'll report early to Arkansas State, but he doesn't have an exact report date just yet. Very awesome. Congratulations yeah, yeah. to all the students. Yeah, a lot of talent out of San Antonio. All right. Thank Thanks. you, Larry. And have you seen those hot chocolate bombs people are making this year? Well, SA Live is going to show us how it's done. And they're playing a visit to a local toffee spot for some tasty gift ideas. Hey, Mike and Fiona. Oh boy, oh boy, do we have a lot going on on today's show. And we are counting, but we've run out of hands to yes, count because... Yes. We're on our day 11 of our 12 days of Christmas giveaway. So that means that whoever wins today's prize gets days 1 through 10 as well. And wait till you find out what today's prize is. These are some fantastic prizes. I think the best we have ever had. Speaking of prizes and gifts, 
Hmm, hmm, what to get, what to get. Our expert, Jen Munoz, has some fantastic ideas. And of course, you know what's great for the holiday season is candy, mm -hmm. but how about some coffee? We are going to mm. take you to a local place that does them in amazing flavors. It just makes your mouth water thinking about it. Speaking of that, we all love good hot chocolate. How about a hot chocolate bomb? It is so neat, so neat for the kids. How do you make them though? Adina Anderson has some great tips. We're gonna try our hand at that. And how you can help out by, by getting some stocking stuffers. We're gonna tell you all about this ASAT community event. Yep, that way a lot of kids from SA Youth are gonna have a very Merry Christmas and it doesn't take much. We're gonna tell you all about it. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.